二零一六年嘅第七条题目咧，就系、是、讲身体防卫嘅。咁我哋见到呢幅图啦，有一个受伤嘅皮肤嘅部分啦，咁呢度有凝血啦，咁下面啦有啲細胞咧就出紧嚟。啊，咁成件事咧就系炎性反应啦。咁啊 ，Part A 咧都问啦，喂，究竟 A 呢款声系咩咧？其实唔问啦，都要答噶啦，系咪？呢款白血球咩嘢嚟嘅咧？其实啦就系考我哋对于吞噬細胞佢嗰个形状啊，佢个特征啊嘅理解嘅。咁啊，吞噬細胞呢，其实佢可以改变个形状，从而啦就去接离开我哋嘅微血管。佢自己本身呢，都係一个不規則嘅形状啦。咁所以啦 ，A 呢，自不然吞噬細胞啦。呢幅图啦，都俾返大家睇返啦，成个 phycocytosis 有啲咩嘅步骤啦？啊，点样咧将个 cell membrane 呢去对内去接佢 infolding 啊，然后啦就有即係 pseudopodia 有个危足。咁啊，包圍咗隻嘢，跟住食咗落去啊，跟住呢就再消化佢。咁呢個題目有咩變奏啊？咁問完你個 cell 叫咩名咯？問下呢個 cell 佢嘅適應性特徵咯，將結構同功能拉上關係啦。佢個細胞膜佢個流動性有咩咁重要呢？而喺個 cell 入面呢，我哋揾到好多 mitochondria 同埋 rough ER 喎，有咩咁重要呢？到 part B 咯，成條呢就係想問返我哋炎性反應嘅。要我哋解释返点解当一个伤口发炎嘅时候啦，咁通常呢有以下嘅症状咯，红肿痛啦。成条题目就係考返对于炎性反应嘅根源，究竟系咩？点解无啦啦会发炎呢？哦，咁我记得啦，感染囉，受伤囉，咁正常啊，系咪？啊，俾把刀介亲，跟住有細菌呢，有机会入侵啦。你嘅身体面对住受伤同感染啦，呢、這个风险我哋要做啲咩嘢呢？咁啊，受破坏嘅細胞呢，就会释放一啲化学物质。佢终极目标就係希望有多啲嘅白血球嚟到呢一个受伤嘅位置去打仗啊嘛，正所谓派重兵去驻守啦。例如啦，运多啲嘅灰球细嚟。咁你会问嘅，喂，咁多啲 lymph 细、淋巴細胞得唔得？梗系得啦，但系你要提返自己。净系得吞噬細胞呢，佢系可以改变佢个形状呢，从而咧离开个微血管嘅。咁我点样可以即系派重兵啊？咁我哋炎性反应呢、這个反应究竟系做紧咩嘢呢？发炎系讲紧你身体做咗两样嘢，第一样就系小动物嘅扩张，第二样就系微血管嘅渗透性增加咗。呢呢个根源呢。大家一定要噏得出嘅，點解炎性反應會導致紅腫痛？你要講咗個因先可以講個果㗎嘛？紅腫痛係個果嚟嘅，個因呢係小動物擴張，係微血管嘅滲透程度增加。咁之後會發生咩事啊？由於小動物擴張，就會多咗血流流到去我哋傷口嘅位置。同一時間，由於微血管壁嘅滲透度增加，亦都會多咗組織液俾人逼咗出嚟，從而就累積咗。而太多嘅組織液亦都會刺激咗喺我哋傷口位置嘅 p i n receptor， 從而就解釋翻我哋嘅紅腫痛啦。多咗血液流經傷口，血液入面有紅血球，紅血球入面有血紅素，而血紅素係紅色嘅，所以就會導致到發炎嘅部分呈現紅色嘅症狀啦。而太多嘅組織液俾人逼咗出嚟，從而累積嘅話咧，就會導致到有腫脹呢個症狀啦。而太多嘅組織液按压咗我哋嘅神经末梢，从而刺激我哋嘅痛觉感应器呢就导致到我哋有痛楚啦。所以大家喺呢一 part 要搞得清嘅就係因同果，炎性反应係个因，红肿痛甚至乎熱係个果。我同学呢都搞乱咗㗎。哎呀，发炎呢，就即係红肿痛熱，唔係发炎唔係红肿痛熱，发炎即係炎性反应，係讲緊小动物扩张，埋微血管嘅血管壁。渗透度增加啫，跟住啦，仲有多两个 reminder 嘅，有关于增加咗血流嘅话呢，原因系小动物嘅扩张，有啲同学呢就当咗系微血管嘅扩张，其实个逻辑就系讲緊动物嘅结构啊，动物结构呢，有呢个肌肉层，呢、這个肌肉层呢，有得放松，有得收缩。当佢放松嘅时候咧，成个小动物咧就会呈现一个扩张嘅状态啦。而伤口肿胀咧系因为组织液嘅积聚，而唔系白血球嘅积聚。咁你会问啦，喂，两 Sir， 咁啊多咗组织液逼出嚟啦，咁而啲吞噬細胞又真系会挤离开咗个微血管，咁系咪积聚啊？系，系积聚咗啲白血球，但系系积聚咗多啲嘅组织液，先能够提供一个战场俾啲白血球冲出嚟去打細菌啊嘛，系咪？跟住落去到拍斯啦，佢就話細胞 A 呢，吞噬細胞呢，係能夠將呢個入侵病原體嘅抗原呢，去呈遞俾淋巴細胞去睇嘅。就要我哋描述下，跟住會發生啲咩事呢？成條題目就係講緊抗原嘅呈遞，講得抗原呈遞就不得不提嘅就係淋巴細胞佢所產生嘅特異性身體防衞機制啦。
，咁大家有印象嘅一定係讲緊 B cell 同埋 T cell 噶啦。第一款呢，就係抗体介度嘅免疫反应 ，B 淋巴細胞被激活嘅话呢。佢哋就會分裂成為記憶細胞同埋漿細胞，漿細胞呢就會產生抗體去對抗嗰款病原體啦。呢、這個題目呢就冇問得好仔細嘅，佢又冇問你喂 a n t i b o d y 究竟會點樣用，但係下次可能會問埋你啦，係咪？咁啊，符合答案呢都未至於咁詳盡嘅，就係、是、講咗 B 淋巴細胞嘅活動呢，就會導致到啦抗體嘅生成啦。詳盡少少嘅答法呢，應該都係講緊 B 淋巴細胞呢係會分裂同埋分化成為漿細胞同埋記憶細胞。而將細胞就會產生抗體啦。另一個咧就係細胞介度嘅免疫反應，亦即係 T 細胞啦。T 淋巴細胞被激活嘅話咧，佢又係會分裂同埋分化，成為記憶 T 細胞同埋殺手 T 細胞。咁殺手 T 細胞咧就會將嗰個受感染嘅細胞去摧毀咗佢。嗱個重點咧唔係摧毀個病原體，係摧毀一個受感染嘅細胞。讲完将細胞，讲完杀手 T 細胞未够，我哋仲有记忆細胞，因为呢个系初发嘅免疫反应。而记忆細胞由于系会认得住呢一款嘅抗原啦，所以当佢有 second attack 或者你唔用 second attack， 用翻 secondary immune response。当我哋再次去见到同一款嘅抗原嘅话咧，咩叫做做得快啲嘅反应呢？就系、是、记忆細胞系会刺激咗我哋嘅 B 細胞。再次分裂同埋分化成为好多嘅漿細胞，喺一段短时间之内制造大量嘅抗体，从而咧去抗击呢个病原体嘅。咁呢度咧都要提翻大家嗰两个字眼啦，就係、是、分裂同埋分化啦。又嚟到一点出发啦，今次咧一个主题咧就係受伤嘅皮肤，然后咧就考我哋两大样嘢啦。第一样咧就係非特異性嘅防御机制，另一款咧就係特異性嘅防御机制啦。先讲咗非特異性先啦，咁啊主要咧就係考翻我哋炎性。性反应嘅，咁啊红肿痛，今次冇讲热嘅，红肿痛点解会产生啦？咁你有翻个因果关系啦。今次题目讲红肿痛啫，热又点解咧？其实都系基于啦炎性反应啦，小动物扩张多咗血流，流到去我哋受伤嘅位置或者我哋嘅伤口啦。而血咧都會帶住我哋嘅身體嘅熱度嘅，將我哋發炎嘅位置咧都會輕輕地嘅。當中我想講到兩個字，一個係病徵，一個係症狀。病徵咧係一啲可以觀察到、量度到嘅特徵嚟嘅，就係、是、代表住你已經病緊啦。而咧症狀咧就係個病人先感受到嘅啫。咁我想問下大家啦，紅腫痛熱。边啲系病征，边啲系症状呢？跟住咧就系到特异性嘅防御机制啦。有关于抗体嘅就系 B 淋巴細胞啦，有关于細胞介度嘅就系 T 淋巴細胞啦。当中引申出嚟嘅，自不然就系初发反应同埋继发反应啦，亦都会考我哋疫苗嘅原理嘅。咁所以过往啦都有关于一啲需唔需要打针啊，有关于免疫力嘅概念啦。呢样嘢咧又要提翻大家咯。兩場成日提大家嘅獨敗我咧，記住 together together， 我哋就要識得將非特異性嘅防禦同埋特異性嘅防禦一齊講啦。今次題目咧都有問到嘅，係吞噬細胞做到嘅抗原呈遞，將呢個抗原呈遞俾淋巴細胞去睇，亦即係將特異性同埋非特異性防禦就一齊做嘢啦。你要留意，成個免疫系統咧係一個故事嚟嘅。当有啲細菌入侵咗你身体嘅时候啦，净系得非特异性或者特异性嘅防御机制去做事嘅。呢啲非特异性嘅防御机制去作出首轮嘅防御嘅时候咧，佢杀咗一啲病原体，会将佢哋嘅抗原呈递俾我哋嘅淋巴細胞，都等佢哋进行特异性嘅防御机制。Question seven is about body defense system, so you can see in this diagram there is a site of injured skin exhibiting an inflammatory response. There are some pathogens and they are releasing some toxin. Some rubber cells they are moving out of the capillary to fight against the pathogens. So for part A, so in this question is checking us if we can recognize the shape and the feature of the phycocyte. For the phycocyte, they can change their shape and come out of the capillary. They are irregular shape as well. Therefore, cell A is the phycocyte, and you can recall the phycocytosis in this diagram. We do not only learn phycocytosis in the body defense topic; we also learn it in the cellular transport, diffusion, 
osmosis, active transport, and the last one is the phycocytosis. That means you need to be able to recall the steps of the phycocytosis. For example, the infolding of the cell membrane and form the pseudopodia to surround the pathogens. So, and the possible question variation, it can ask you about the adaptive feature of the phycocyte. So you need to put the structures and the functions together. The fluidity of the cell membrane allow it to change its shape, right? And why are there a lot of mitochondria? mitochondria and rough ER in the phycocyte. You also need to recall them. And for part B, we need to explain why the tissue exhibiting the inflammatory response usually show the symptoms such as redness, swelling, and pain. So when we are going to answer this question, how is the scar folding? As what we see in this diagram, infection or the injury, what to do in order to deal with the infection and the injury. It will be chemicals released by the damaged cells and that it will need to the inflammatory response. The ultimate goal, we would like to transport more riper cells such as phycocyte, lymphocyte to the wound, to the injured area send more soldiers to the battlefield to fight against the pathogens, right? So how can we achieve this ultimate goal? We need the dilation of the arterioles near the wound and increase the permeability of the capillaries. So you can see that you need to talk about the inflammatory response first, and then you talk about the effects, redness, swelling, and pain. Any consequence caused by the inflammatory response? If the arterial of the tissue with the inflammatory response dilate, it will increase the blood flow to the tissue. And when the permeability of capillary wall increases, it will increase the rate of formation of tissue fluid and the tissue fluid accumulation. Much tissue fluid, it will press against the nerve endings and stimulate the pain receptor. Finally, we can recall the effects. According to the increased blood flow, and the blood it contains the red blood cell, and red blood cell it contains a hemoglobin, which is in red in color, so it will make the tissue red. And due to the higher rate of tissue fluid formation and accumulation, it will need to swelling. And due to the accumulation of the tissue fluid, it will stimulate the pain receptor and give the pain sensation. That's why in this question, you really need the scaffolding to talk about the cause and effect. Many students, they misunderstand that all oh, the inflammatory response, it means the redness, swelling, pain, and hot. And there are two reminders I would like to talk about. The cause of the increased blood flow is due to the dilation of the arterial, but not the dilation of capillaries. The idea is that there is muscle layer in the arterial, and this muscle it will contract or relax to make the arterial constrict or dilate. So once the muscle layer is relaxing, so the arterial will dilate, and the lumen size will become bigger. However, for the capillaries, there is no muscle layer in the capillary wall. Therefore, the capillary it can neither dilate nor constrict. And for the cause of the swollen wound, is due to the accumulation of the tissue fluid, but not the accumulation of ribus cell. You may ask that, no, 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 Mr. Leung, if there is a lot of tissue fluid, there should be a lot of ribus cell. Uh, yes, I agree this logic, but the idea is that is talking about the swollen wound. That means there should be some fluid accumulate and then make the tissue become swollen, but not the riper cells. And for part C, we go back to the cell A. The phycocyte will present the antigens of the invading pathogens to the lymphocyte. So we need to describe what will happen later on. So once we're talking about the antigen presentation, therefore our body is exposed to the antigen. So that's why we need to talk about the specific immune response. You need to talk about the B lymphocyte and the T lymphocyte. What do they do? First of all, let's talk about the antibody mediated immune response. The activity of the B lymphocyte. We need to production of antibodies against the specific pathogen. Surely this answer is not that comprehensive. The more comprehensive understanding should be the activation of the B lymphocyte. The B lymphocyte will divide and differentiate into plasma cells and memory cells. And for the plasma cells, they reproduce antibody to act against the antigen of the specific pathogens. So you need to talk about the plasma cells to produce the antibody, right? Second type 
of specific immune response is a cell mediated immune response and we need to talk about the activity of T lymphocyte as I mentioned before the more comprehensive understanding will be the T lymphocyte will divide and differentiate into killer T cell and the memory T cell and the killer T cell it will destroy the infected cell remember that the key words is the infected cells but not the particular pathogens or the antigen after we talk about the plasma cells and the killer T cells remember we need to talk about the memory cells so the memory cell will be formed in the primary immune response and once the memory cells they get the second exposure to the same antigen later on maybe the second time or third time or fourth time so there will be a quicker response in the second attack for example the memory cell it will stimulate the B lymphocyte to divide and differentiate into a lot of plasma cells and the plasma cells they can produce a lot of antibodies in a short period of time to act against the antigen reminder i would like to talk about these two verbs divided and differentiate so let's talk about the curriculum mapping this question it starts from the injury the skin and then it checks two main concepts the first one is the non-specific defense mechanism and the second one is the specific defense mechanism so for the non-specific defense mechanism we talk about the inflammatory response this question we talk about the redness swelling and pain maybe next time it can ask you why the inflammatory tissue they are a bit hotter because increase the blood flow to the wound and the blood it will also carry the body heat it will make the inflammatory tissue become warmer or hot and then i would like to talk about these two terms sign and the symptoms a sign is an evidence of the disease that can be measured or observed by other people and for the symptom it can only be felt by the patient so please tell me for the redness swelling pain and hot one is the sign and which one is the symptom specific defense mechanism we talk about the lymphocyte B lymphocytes they are involved in the antibody mediated immunity and for the T lymphocyte they are involved in the cell mediated immunity we extend the concept to the primary and secondary immune response we can also talk about the principle of the vaccination and then you can check some video about the vaccination and the immunity for the whole question i would like to convey the message again mr Leung always mentioned when we study the biology we need to study together together that means we need to connect different topics together in this question it really checks you such concept for the past c is talking about the phycocyte it will do the antigen presentation to the lymphocyte that's the idea about the collaboration of non-specific and specific defense mechanism they work together you need to clarify the concept that when there is a pathogen invading our body not only the non-specific defense mechanism working but also the specific defense mechanism they also work they also work together to fight against the pathogens